Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to Interstage Window. Um, I'm Karen Terry and I'm here with, as usual, Hi. <laughs> oh, it's, it's Landa, um, the voice from the beyond, the creature hiding underneath your bed, the stories that they tell in the dark. That's me. Hi. Sorry. Oh my gosh. How... <laughs> <laughs> How appropriate. So um, so once again, we're still working on Landon's internet to get her camera going. Hey, Mochi, so glad, glad to see you here. Um, but uh, but we're still committed to trying to get that to work at some point. It's just today was um, not that day. Not today. Winnie, you are early. We literally just started, so don't worry. <gasps> Cass, so glad that you're here too. Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, Landon, all of our friends are here so early. <laughs> Why is this person I'm so excited? <laughs> um, okay, so before we actually get started, I want to let everyone everybody know that for next week because it's thanksgiving there won't be any stream so no artistic license next week no um no uh interstage window next week uh you're not because... gonna host this on your you're not gonna host this at your dinner table for thanksgiving um i mean uh i will think of you in spirit but um but no <laughs> Gosh darn it. Where else am I going to go? I don't know. You'll have to figure that out. You'll have to figure that out with your um your real life people. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you, Mochi. Um, so speaking of so speaking of that, we will be back in December, but the December schedule is going to work a little bit differently because once again, holidays are going to get in the way of some streams. So there is one particular stream, though, in December that we want to tease. So Landon, can you tell us about uh, that particular stream that you know, you know so, which one I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, it's very, 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 very important that everybody take off December 12th, mostly because I have convinced Karen to play Among Us again. And we need an entire lobby full so that she can continue to blame me on being the imposter when I am so obviously not the imposter. <laughs> yes, so we're gonna do another um, playing with viewers among us stream on the 12th and I would love for as many of you guys as possible to be there so that we can have, um, have as many players as possible. Sorry, so I just saw who I was. <laughs> <laughs> my picture and I had a heart attack and I love it so much. So Landon asked, I asked Landon today, like since her camera's still not working, who she wanted to be. And she said, I don't care. Um, and then you introduced yourself so perfectly for who I had chosen. So <laughs> uh, yeah, so here we go. Because Landon today is represented. It, well, yeah, exactly. So um, Landon today is represented by the ineffable Klaus Michelson. So you guys can imagine uh, imagine her as, as, as Klaus for this particular stream. <laughs> it's not wrong. It's not wrong. Exactly. All right, sweet. Um, okay, so I've got the game going. I, we said the things we wanted to say. Um, can you explain kind of what we're going to talk about today? And then I guess we'll do favorite things. Today is going to be a stream all about character creation. Ooh. And this could be creating characters for a new world. It can be creating characters for a world that you're already in. It can be cre creating characters in order to, like, uh, if you have a one-on-one, -on -one, in order to, like, have side characters or to spread out that world. Or if you're in a group, figuring out what best characters for group dynamic. Mm -hmm. How to do that, how to build a, real a realistic character, and what's necessary in order for that to happen. Yeah, I'm excited. Hi, Marina. Hey, Marina. Hey, so glad that you're sorry. here. I don't know why. My brain just decides to take Marina's name and call it Mariana. And it's been happening for two and a half years now. And I know on the level that it's Marina, but my brain just doesn't want to do it. It's never, it's never been Mariana. I don't know <laughs> how that happens. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's always been Marina. It's kind of like Chewy Shui thing. Yeah, that's just true. Although I don't do that. We don't use that name anymore, but, um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's true. <laughs> it's okay. You had a name change too, partway through our friendship. And that was a struggle for me. Um, that's true. Too. Yeah. <laughs> we love it. Yes. Anyway. Um, yeah. So before we do all of that, before we dive in, you want to tell me your favorite thing? Yes. Okay. So, um, as y'all know, it's Christmas time, right? I showed off before uh, this gift from my husband, right? This little Evie Funko that he got me. And I told y'all on that artistic license stream that he'd actually been searching for this particular Funko like on and off, just like as a thing, like if he found it to get it for like two years before he happened to go into a store that had it. Um, so it, since it's Christmas, right? He's all in the gift giving mood. So I have another gift from the husband today. 
that he 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 said so I, I i i opened it in front of him so i could be excited in front of him right but he said i had to wait to stream to try it because it just fit my stream aesthetic so well so i'm going to show you guys what this is it's so cute look at this unicorn jerky so they are gummies and we're gonna try one um so this is my favorite thing right and i i i love unicorn stuff like y'all know rainbows and all that shit like i'm here for it obviously like i mean all this going on behind me so let's try one and see how they are i'm very excited to see the packaging i was seeing the eevee and the eevee is very cute and now i can see the gummies okay yes! So this is this is what they look like. So I know it's a little it's a little delayed for you, Landon. You're hearing me early, but they're little little gummies. They look like little um, little pieces of jerky, but they're like rainbowish, and they have some kind of like sugar coating. Okay, so let's let's try and see what they taste like. They're pretty good. They taste kind of like okay. They taste kind of like if um, fruit stripes gum made like a sour gummy worm. Oh, I like that. I like it. I can see that. They look good. like sour power straws. They kind of taste like sour power straws, right? Like if there was yeah, a Yeah, they Oh. I was yeah. going to say they look like the um the airheads like pull mm -hmm. things. Mhm. Mm yeah, pretty much. So, if you want to try them, um he got them from this place called Sunday Scaries. You can see the name right there, Sunday Scaries. And uh they even sent me like little funny postcards, right? So I'll show those so you guys can see. Um, it says when when you're down to your last gummy, and it's the stapler guy from the office, and um, <laughs> and they have some kind of subscription plans, right? Because I mean, I'm sure you all saw in the packet it says with CBD. Um, so he didn't want the subscription or anything because he really just got these because they were unicorn. Um, but they do have subscriptions if like you're into supplements and stuff like that. And uh, and they gave me a promo code, so I'm going to share that with you guys if you guys are interested in that sort of thing. Um, because I'm not going to use it and be honest. Like he really just got it because it was unicorn. I'm not going to do it. Um, but here, if you want to do like a subscription with them, this is this is what the code is right here. I'm showing that up on the camera right now. Okay, um, but they're pretty good. Like I mean, I would get these again. I would, they, were, they were a little bit expensive. I'm not going to lie. It was like twenty five dollars for this tiny bag. So you oh, know, wow. but they're pretty good. Yeah. But it's unicorn themed, so mm -hmm. it's more worth it. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. We're just gonna eat one more. Because I know the sound of eating on stream sounds really awkward, so we're not gonna do that too much. Well, that's some people like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people. Okay. So that's my favorite thing this week. Um, Landon, what's your favorite thing? So my favorite thing I'm actually dropping in the chat. <laughs> oh, that's not it. I just almost dropped stuff from our new RP in the chat. Oh Whoops. my god, Marina, you're cracking me up. Oh, ASMR gummy eating a uh, mukbang Karen. <laughs> I do an ASMR stream. I don't know, guys. I don't know if I'm um if I'm really equipped for ASMR. I don't know. Um, I'm not against it. I'm just not sure that I am the the person to do it. Okay, so what is this link? This is an Amazon link, right, Landon? Yes, it's an Amazon link. So this is a uh, book, a book of poetry written by my wonderful friend William Eaton. It's oh. called Rough Edges and Straight Lines and it just came out yesterday. Wow. And Will is a great amazing friend but is also a wonderful poet and I just want to put on blast that he made a thing, put it out into the universe and I hope that people will support it. Um and then on the same time as this he also uh started a podcast as well that he's been planning and scripting for the last few uh, months called The Writing Endeavor. And if you enjoy us talking about writing, then maybe you can go listen to him talk about writing. Um, I have a feeling I will make an appearance on the podcast in an interview form at some point. But uh, yeah, that's that's what I got for you. I, I suggest it. I'm so happy about this book. And it made me just happy for my friends. So it's my favorite thing of the week. Wow. So when you when you're on the when you when you're eventually on the episode, you'll have to tell us yes. what episode it is so that we can go listen to that one um, at the very uh, least, right? Um, so yeah, if you guys are into poetry, uh, check out his book, take a look at it. If Landon's recommending it, I know it's good because she has a poetry book as well. And, <laughs> um, and it's really good. So you know, if she thinks it's good poetry, then it's bound to be good poetry. So um, see, so, yeah, I haven't, I, I have not read it yet. But um, even just from that, I feel like I can recommend it. <laughs> well, I apologize for selling you guys something first thing out. But just, you know, Hey, if it's, if it's for a friend, I think it's appropriate, right? Like I want to, I want to support everybody that, um, that helps us out and that supports us too. Right. 
Absolutely. Okay. All right. Sweet. Um, I like it. Good favorite things today. I All right. Agree. So, how do we want to get started with our with our topic? That's a great question. Um, I think that we should talk about. You want to write a new character, so where do you start with that? I think we start with the same question of where mm -hmm. do you start, mm -hmm. and I think that um, one of the first things that you need to consider is uh, what type of character is going to fit into your RP. Because if you're writing a big bad villains RP and you want to write, you know, a small innocent Snow White, um, you either have to have a very specific plot in mind, or that might not be the RP for that character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. Um, oh, Cass has a question about the about this podcast. Is the writing oh, yeah. .com the website for it? It looks like it's still under construction, so he thinks he might have found it. Is that right? Um, I don't know about a website, but I know it's on any podcast streaming service. So, yes, actually, the writing in Denver .com is his. Sorry, okay. I just looked at the actual book. Ah, oh, sweet. Okay. Um, and hey, Lunar, so happy that you're here with us today. Um, yeah, so I think I think that uh, that a lot of us are on new character brain right now. I know I have not fully released the new role play to everybody, but you guys know we're in the process of working on it. And just the other day, I made the server for it, and we did that on stream, right? So I was able to tease a lot of information about it. So I know a lot of us um, that are interested in my role plays, like a lot of my friends, I know you guys are are thinking about character creation right now. So, um, so that's a, a big reason that we want to talk about this today. And I think, uh, I think that, yeah, making sure they fit what it is that you want to do is such a critical piece, right? Like if you're doing a group role play, then you have a bunch of lore out there for you. If you're joining a fandom role play, you have a bunch of lore out there for you. Um, and then I think when it comes to like a one-on-one -on -one role play, you, you have to think about like what kind of partner are you trying to attract and what kind of stories do you want to do with that partner and uh, and like that's the type of information but there's always like some background information that you should be thinking about as far as like why you want to play a certain character um, and that's a really good starting point so that you kind of are building with purpose as opposed to just kind of like I'm just slapping some things together and see what works not that that doesn't go amazing sometimes like sometimes that goes awesome but um, but not always, and it can be a frustrating process, I think, when you do it that way. Yeah, and I think realistically what we're going to push for most of this podcast, mm -hmm. for this episode, is that do things with purpose. Yeah. Um, don't leave things up to chance. With, like, that's just going to be the overall theme. I can tell you guys that already. Yes, it does work out sometimes. Yes, there are some things that absolutely you can leave up to chance mm -hmm. or want to figure out later. You don't need to know every little bit of a character's history in order to write a good character. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes that like you need to you need to do things purposefully yeah <laughs> lunar which type of which uh, type of pinata do you want me to name cal calis calista calista um you can see like in the in the overlay the pinatas the types of pinatas that i have in this garden so tell me which kind um you would like to have that name and marina i see that you had redeemed that as well but i think it was an accident <laughs> but if you do want me to name something um asmr gummy eating tell me what kind of uh what kind of pinata and uh and i'll do that <laughs> um only my dignity i don't know who the, who uh if what your uh name is otherwise so i don't know if i know you but that's a hundred percent of my college essays as well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and like, I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was, oops. I was going to be like, oh, these words, these words slap together. Sound good and educated. Must pass <laughs> college for. Well, I think <laughs> it's different when you're doing something like on assignment or for, yes. for, for a grade or like for a commission or something like that. Right. Like those are all things that you end up kind of like having to do. And so I think the advice is a little different when you're creating for creation's sake versus when you are like, you like have to create something because, you know, you have some kind of reason for it. Um, so I think most of what yep. we're talking about here is more like creative pursuits, um, artistic pursuits that are not necessarily being forced upon you, that they're, they're things that you're choosing to do. Good evening. I agree. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, and I think that, like, if you're brainstorming a character, slapping stuff together to see what works is a good way to start. Oh, yeah. Um, 
especially if it, especially if you're making an OC without a group in mind. If you're mm-hmm. making a OC that you want to advertise on your own and find RP characters to play with you or other RP writers to play with that character, um, then you can totally start by slapping just traits together and being like, well, I want them to be a small boy who is angry <laughs> and <laughs> has, you know, a, I don't know, some sort of issue with some parental unit. Um, <laughs> like you why, know, why are you describing like every OC? Because <laughs> I've met all of them. <laughs> Um, um yeah and i think i think that the that slapping stuff together is good for like um getting the juices flowing right and absolutely. doing some free writing but i think if you are going to use that method then it's really useful to like after you finish the creation process to go back and look at everything and make sure that like you still like everything that you've put together and you still like agree with yourself with all the stuff that you that you want to do you know yeah I have a I have a pretty firm rule when it comes to character creation, at least like creating a character from the very, very, very beginning. Um, the first draft is not the last draft. True. That's like with any sort of purposeful writing. The so like the base of the character that I come up with is not going to be the character I submit exactly, and I have to be okay and allowed to change things because if I don't, then I'm going to have a really messed up character. <laughs> <laughs> or or not a well thought out character enough. Yeah, and I think that's one thing because since you said contradiction, that's one thing I want to say too. Um, people in in real life a lot of times don't make sense and contradict themselves in all kinds of crazy things. But when you're making a character, they're not a real person. So although a lot of my advice has to do with like trying to make a more realistic character, when I when I say that, I mean like realistic to making a realistic character a character is still not the same thing as a real person you know so so i think that's that's helpful to keep in mind because sometimes i think we get that confused and then we kind of make the task more daunting than it than it has to be um if you are going into character creation being like i'm going to make the most human character there ever was um you're doing it wrong (laughs) yeah i think so i think you're making it like way harder than it has to be um lunar has a a, uh, sorry go ahead no i was gonna be like humans are just way more complicated than you want to deal with ever writing (laughs) yeah and it's just not gonna make a good story you know um a good character is like is is comp is like deceptive in how simple they are right like you want them to be simple but also complex like have enough nuance there that they feel like they could be a real person but not enough nuance for them to actually be a real person um and lunar has a good question here how do y'all start making a character do you start with a name traits or face claim so i typically will start with um, either traits or a face claim. Sometimes I'm inspired by a particular face claim and, and we are gonna talk about face claims in just a little bit. Um, but uh, but sometimes I don't, like sometimes I start with like, I want a character that fits this trope or I want a character to do this plot with and then I will find a face claim from there. Um, but I don't ever start with a name. Like name is, name is never what I start with. <laughs> and I have a whole video where I talk about names and kind of my methods for naming things. And the truth is like most people don't get to pick their own name. Now, like some people do, right? Like um, some examples, are, like there's cultures where um, people have like a birth name and then like a, a name that they that they get later. Um, anybody that's gone through like a gender transition, typically they will change their names and pick their own names. But most people don't, right? Like that's not super common in, in our societies. So um, when I'm naming something, I think about either how that name is going to play into the narrative or I think about like what that character's parents would have named them because that's how it happens for most of us in reality. So for that reason, I don't ever start with a name. Um, but Landon, what do you think? What do you typically start with? There's a reason why the last step of writing a book is is naming the book. <laughs> There's a reason why like the last thing that the hospital asks you to do after you've given birth to a child is name that child (laughs) there is because you don't you don't know right there might be something you might find out that a character has has really ties to family and therefore it needs to be a family name 
or all of these things. So starting for me, starting for a name just seems so wild. <laughs> and it also seems like for me, it would be setting myself up to being rigid in this character, like building process. The only time that I could see myself picking a name before I had a fully fledged character is if I was trying to fit into a certain plot. So if someone sat there and was like, hey, I have an NPC who is an ex-boyfriend of my characters and that it would be cool if we could bring that NPC in as a playable character. Um, and that character canonly is already named James. That would be the only time that I'd be like, oh, I can get inspired off of a name, James. But that also is because I'm inspired off of the plot. <laughs> oh yeah, because they already have a name, right? And I guess that also happens when we're doing any kind of um, any kind of fandom role play, right? Because those characters, but those characters pre come with a lot of stuff a lot of times. But yes. at the very least, they come with a name. Sometimes only a name if you're playing like a side character, right? <clears throat> yeah. So if I'm playing, so I think that names like that. But if I'm playing a completely like OC character, OC character, like the, the, name, <laughs> o, the name OC doesn't have the word character in it already. If I'm playing an OC, um, then I'm just, I'm, the name's going to be the last thing on the list of things to get to. Yeah, for me too. I would say that's the same. So do you, but do you tend to start with um, maybe a face claim or traits first or maybe something else? Plot. I plot. Typically, always start with plot. I typically, when I create a character, from scratch, because I have an arsenal of already char of characters I've already made and can choose from, if I am building a character from scra scratch, it's usually because none of my characters fit into that plot mm. or isn't what I'm looking for. And therefore, I have a plot idea in mind that I want to play out and need traits of a character to fit that. So I guess it goes plot, traits, face claim, name. Gotcha. That makes sense. And I, I guess I'm in the same boat in the sense that, yeah, hey, Naomi, um, I'm in the same boat in the sense that I, I have so many OCs and um, canon characters that I've adapted over the years already that uh, that I, I totally know what you mean about like, oh, I don't do that. And, and I guess I don't really do it anymore either, but not because I have never done that, but instead because I have this list of characters already in existence so yeah. that's more the reason not because i've not used that method it's just like currently i have no need to use that method yeah and it's just a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's something that i want to talk about like just to mention up front character creation is hard yeah this is not an easy talent even if you are really good at creating characters and like to do it it is something that takes a lot of work and a lot of forethought, especially if you do it, I guess, at least for me and the standards of what I like, it takes a lot of work and forethought. There are some people who are totally fine with throwing a character that they threw together out into the RP world. And there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, it, I think that there's a lot of legwork that comes with building a character just as much as there would be for building a world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say um, I would say that really depends because I think one of the beauties of, of role play compared to other mediums is that you do actually get the choice of not doing that if you don't want to. You can yeah, make just like the barest bones amount of information for your character and then throw them out into the world because there is the element of emergent storytelling that exists within within role play. So um, so you know if you're using using that method where you kind of try to discover the character through role play, then you don't have to come up with nearly as much stuff. Um, but it just really depends. It really depends on what you're what you're trying to do. And uh, and also, I think it's helpful to keep in mind what your partner um, or group that you're joining is comfortable with, right? Because it, it, we're doing yeah. something so collaborative that it's important to take into account, like, how much are the people in this particular space going to expect of me? Yes. And, and like... I won't lie. We expect a lot from our, from our writers. And for our ours. Yeah, I think we do. We we're probably on the very high end of that. Right. I don't think that we're, yeah. that we're typical in that regard. We expect a lot. <laughs> Especially depending on what, like if we take Atlantis for an example with Atlantis, we expected people to know exactly how they were fitting into the world. Yeah. Um, what their role is, how they got involved in the mod. 
Um, and this is not stuff that you can just kind of throw together. And then we also require multi-paragraphs or at least a couple paragraphs of background history yeah and any personality traits or anything like that too like we do require a lot of thought when it comes to our characters mm -hmm. um and it's not it's not like overly like we're not asking you guys to fill out you know character sheets or buy karen's book and then like you know return in 365 days of <gasps> character <making>. oh my god <laughs> uh, oh my god i i don't <laughs> even have a character where i've actually answered all of those questions I've, i have characters where i could but i've never sat down and done it you know that's like a lot yeah. right and a lot of those things you you come come with you being able to just practice it's just practice, practice. and the more you <laughs> practice the better you characters. get at it yeah yeah. Get to know your characters. And also characters change worlds, so do their wants and needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. T things about the characters always get tweaked when there's a, when it's a new plot or a new setting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that knowing what it is and why you are making this character is the number one first step. Yeah. Because that's um, going to dictate how much work you have to put in, what that work looks like, all of that stuff. Absolutely. Um, How much are you going to be collaborating with someone? If mm -hmm. you're going to be making someone's daughter or husband or ship partner or um, ex or anything that has to do with another person, you you then owe that person a collaboration. Mm -hmm. Because especially if you were playing an, or it's an NPC that you are picking up, then you owe that person a like, oh, you came up, up with this character originally. I want to expand upon that. Yeah. Um, or if you are going to ship with that person, be like, okay, what kind of character are you into? Like, is your character into? Mm -hmm. I have, I can't tell you how many times it's happened that I've been like, oh, hey, you, I have a character in mind that your character could totally ship with. And then we not communicate anything beyond <laughs> that. And it turns out our characters hate each other. Yeah. And then the dynamic just doesn't work because it wasn't what they were expecting. Y'all enjoy different dynamics in ships, all that kind of stuff. So then it just or doesn't work out. Yeah, or the character is just like way more like uh, in the particular thing that I'm thinking of, my character Magnus was much more aggressive than I think I communicated. Yeah. And her character was much more aggressive than she originally communicated. So we got two aggressive people together that was supposed to be fun, flirty energy, and it turned out to be really angry, let's kill each other energy. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing, and in hindsight, it seems so obvious, but when you're when you're in the middle of it, it's like kind of hard to tell sometimes. Absolutely. So it's like having those conversations. And I'm not saying that like you have to have everything plotted out, but if these are the reasons why that you're creating a character, these are the conversations you have to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, so they're, they're in the chat, they're talking a lot about baby name websites. So um, I want to say just a, a little bit on that. Yeah, I think baby name websites are great. I use them. Um, I especially use them because as y'all know, name is something that I pick later on. Um, so I think it's really useful to go to those websites because I can just kind of scroll through the names, right, and get inspired uh, by by something because I already kind of know what it is I want to do with that character. Um, so I'm a huge proponent of those. And if you're not going to use like a baby name website in particular because you're doing something that like it doesn't have like a real world equivalent, so it's not going to be there. There's also that one website, Fantasy Name Generator. That's the other one that I use that I really, really love. I like pulling from um, media, literature, art um, as a almost a motif or a reference to things. So like Cassandra is one of my characters and she was originally psychic. That was her power. She eventually got to see the future. Um, and of course, there's a famous Cassandra who is a mm -hmm. famous um, psychic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Pulling from that or, um, you know, pulling, I'm trying to remember where I got Magnus from. But yeah, I, I think it's, I, for me, I like to reference art stuff or... or... Can, I, can I say something? Can I say yeah, something? Sure. So yeah. when you named Magnus, uh, in my mind, it was always like like Magnum condoms because he had I such BDE. <laughs> <laughs> he had such BDE. Oh, hey, he Thumper. Oh, my God. So happy to see you here. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I Maybe if you're saying, like, maybe that was where you got it from, but that's what I always thought. 
Yeah, and I think that there was a, um, I, I pulled some inspirations here th too. I think that there's a Magnus that just like had an angry, I don't remember even, it was several <laughs> years ago. But I know for a fact I was reading stuff and I was like, oh, Magnus. And then I followed this character down a trail and I was like, oh, it could be a reference to that. Mm -hmm. So I like to use character names as references to other things, but mm -hmm. I'm really high like maintenance like that so baby generators <laughs> are also amazing ways to find names mm -hmm. yeah um yeah it just depends it depends on what you want to do with that character right which goes back to the whole like kind of um think about kind of think about like uh why you're making that character right because that's going to help you with like what exactly you should do for each of these like items that you need to decide yeah. Um, Thumper, yes. Originally, Magnus was a um, offshoot of James, but I didn't connect the names. Maybe I did. Maybe it was magic or something. I don't know. Oh, maybe. maybe it was forever ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe. Um, it's possible. I could see you doing that. <clears throat> but I know it was like, I, I know I, ha I have this with every character where I'm like, oh, that's really clever. And then, and then I named them after that because I oh just like to think that I'm clever. Uh, Thumper, you're cracking me up. Um, she says, I decided I wanted names no one would be able to pronounce. So that she has a character, so Shoris. I think that's how you pronounce it. Shoris? I'm still yeah. not 100% sure because it's spelled like Sayoris. And so in my brain, it's Sayoris. That's not his name. Yeah. I know that's wrong, but and I can't I stop. Sayoris because it like sea, like the ocean sea. And I'm oh. just like, Sayoris. <laughs> It and does look like that. Course, and then it's just like a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think um, also kind of in the character creation, I want to circle back to face claims for just a minute because um, we did have an episode where we talked about representation, right? And we talked a lot about face claims in that episode. But um, I think that, uh, that I want to... Dang it. Sorry, I've, I've popped one of those things in the maze. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so when it comes to face claims, this is something that I use as a big tool for my character creation. I made a video on face claims like freaking forever ago. Like if y'all want to go find that on my channel to see my like expanded comments on why I use face claims. But um, I treat those like like I'm casting an actor in a role, right? And so like, you know, you you always know when you are going to go watch a Nicolas Cage movie, you are in for a wild freaking ride, right? Because it's a Nicolas Cage movie and he only picks absolutely insane projects. Um, so I kind of treat it like that, right? Because you have certain expectations of an actor. And I feel like the face claim can be a really good shortcut communication to help people understand what your character is about. Yeah, I think absolutely there are there are typecasted FCs, right? Mm -hmm, <laughs> like mm -hmm. you know that if you get a you know cute dude who obviously works out, let's take let's take Jensen Ackles. Yeah. You know it's gonna be like a guy with a drinking problem that Probably also some like, daddy is issues. Way too serious and a little bit of daddy issues. Yeah. Because that's what Jensen Ackles face screams. <laughs> um, he, he was playing Dean <laughs> for 15 years before it finally ended, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we've just taken it and done that. And if you're gonna if you're gonna play, you know, a pretty blonde girl that's very high school age, then you can assume that she's going to be all about looks and can be very vain because she's mean girlish. And, yeah. and you can take what you see and typecast people. Um, <laughs> that FC is very helpful for that. Thumper says Sean Bean will always die. <laughs> always. It doesn't matter. He will. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so... Um. <laughs> Oh, Lunar has a good question. This is for you, Landon. What does Taylor Swift as a face claim scream? Well, I once played her as a uh, very <laughs> uh, woman who was losing her mind. Mm -hmm. So that could be it. Yeah, she um, was like she was like very flighty. She started out kind of like a, like a little bit robotic, a little bit um, emotionless. Yeah. And as she kind of got more and more emotional as the story went on, um, that emotion kind of morphed into crazy pants. <laughs> yeah, I started losing it. Yeah. But, like, fairly, so there was a lot going on, like a war. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it didn't come out of nowhere. Like, this was a gradual change in the character. But, uh, no, T-Swift, I think, can be... I mean, it just depends. I, I've also played her as, like, a very... Um, 
smirky like it matters i mean also that's the thing with taylor swift is that she has so many different personas that you could take like the uh head bitch in charge and you could you could play that up because there are pictures like of her doing that you can also have her be the naive girl that you don't know because there are pictures of her doing that like that's the other thing too is that if you have a, a, a celebrity that has a wide range of work or personas that they've put on then you can play within any of those any of those like versions of them yeah like somebody yeah. that's reinvented themselves over and over um you have lots yeah. you have lots you can pick from <laughs> exactly but if you have someone who is like nick cage very typecasted in what he do does or tom cruise or anything like that um then then when you're going to transfer that over it would be really weird for tom cruise to play like the loving dad mm-hmm. he's just not the loving dad because he never or, does <laughs> <laughs> He's not. No. Yeah. Um, and then Peter Baelish is actor. What's his name? Oh, uh, I don't know. But um, so Naomi sorry. knows when she hears this, she'll type it in the chat. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Naomi. But oh, Peter Aiden, is Aiden, Gil- Aiden Gillian. Oh, Aiden Gillian. Um, he's always going to play like a slightly creepy guy because he's kind of always a slight, slightly creepy guy yeah. in, all the, in all of the things that he plays. Yep. Even when he's like a mobster, he's a little creepy. Yep. Everything. <laughs> everything he's he's in, he's a little bit creepy. So um, you're going to have that. You're going to you're going to know a character or you're going to know what kind of box an actor or a celebrity fills or ticks when you are looking for fcs Mm -hmm. and you're gonna know if it fits what you're playing Mm -hmm. yep and i I want to go ahead sorry i think that this was especially important um like this art of picking the right fc was especially important when we had tumblr gifts yeah and it was also Um, important on live journal for the same reason because you had icons and stuff like that but now that we're really role playing on discord it doesn't it doesn't have as much meaning the way yeah, that it used to. to you don't need to find a you know smirking taylor swift if you're having her be you know this sneaky salacious bitch like you mm-hmm. don't need to find that gif in order to get across what she's doing whereas on tumblr i did yeah <laughs> and then it was like oh she doesn't have any of that i guess she can't play this character yeah <laughs> yeah so it's a little bit different you can do you can subvert the face claim expectations a lot more when you're doing something when you're using a platform like discord that really is just it's just text like that's all we're role playing and we're not really using images Absolutely. And I think, and so we talked, because we talked about this in representation, and I also, we want to do another episode on this where we talk about it, like how celebrity culture intersects with role play. So I don't want to dwell on this too much, but I, I want to kind of um, end this little bit by saying that it doesn't matter what method you use for your char- for choosing your character's appearance. We've talked a lot about face claims because that's what we use, but you can use whatever you want. But I do think it is important in role play as opposed to other writing mediums to really communicate what your character looks like so that your partner can know so that you're both imagining something similar stuff like that like when you're writing a novel you don't necessarily have to describe your characters unless their appearance is important to the story and i just don't think that's the case when you're talking about something collaborative like role play so that's kind of like the end cap on on that that i want to make sure that we mention yeah and i think also with novels and stuff like that it's very different you're following one person's storyline hypothetically usually usually not always Um, but yeah which means that Typically, the author describes what every character looks like at the beginning of the book, and then you're expected to remember it. Yeah. If you're playing with 20 different characters and you're jumping in and out of timelines and you're saying hi every once in a while, Uh you're not going to be expected to remember what everyone looks like. Yeah, you're not. And you can't. Like, that's just not reasonable. (laughs) Yeah. So if you want someone to remember what your character looks like, like James or Jimmy um has curly hair wild curly hair is how i wrote him and like i would mention it that his curls were just out of control in Mm -hmm. replies and if you want to highlight a certain look you have to make sure that that's part of your characters like how you write that character yes exactly exactly because your partner is not going to remember that like they're not going to remember that um three months into the role play when they have like a gajillion threads going on it's just not reasonable to expect that so i think peppering that in is um is something that you can do that kind of fixes that problem that you wouldn't really do necessarily when you're writing a novel unless you were like drawing like stark attention to that feature or something you know yeah and there's something weird about it yep (laughs) (laughs) um 
so kind of to, to segue off of that, do you do interviews with your characters? Yes, 110%. So I have a book that I wrote called 365 Days of Character Creation. I should have grabbed it because I knew we were going to end up mentioning it because we were talking about character creation. <laughs> Um, but I didn't. But you guys can find that on Amazon. Um, if some, if a friendly person can go search that and link it in the chat, I would very, very much appreciate it. Um, and and that is essentially a journal where every day you have a character prompt where you write something about your character. Oh, Cass, thank you so much. I'm so glad. Um, and so, so the reason why I wrote that book is because that for me is a super effective method. Now. Do I answer all 365 questions for every character? Absolutely not. I've never had a character where I answered all 365 freaking questions. That's ridiculous. But I think having some time to ask questions of your character and have your character answer them in some way is an incredibly useful character creation technique because you can tease out so much nuance and subtlety in your character that's going to make them feel real in a way that I feel like other character creation methods kind of don't accomplish. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. I mean, and I, we've talked about this before a little bit. Yeah. I, uh, I, how my character creation process is, is an interview. Mm -hmm. I I have like an imagery that I like imagine myself the bartender of the characters within my mind. This new character sits down and I get to learn about this character. And from that interview, whether it be, you know, using questions that are in the book or using questions that I find online or just like sitting there and being like, okay, how did you get into the mob lifestyle? <laughs> um, I develop what that character looks like and is like. Yeah. And that's how I then um, develop a voice for that character or mannerisms for that character, anything mm -hmm. like that. Because mm -hmm. when you're role playing, I think it can be really useful to to keep in mind like speech styles and even changing up your writing style sometimes for a particular character. And that interview process gives you um, a really good way to kind of organically build what that character's voice is like. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Cass. Yeah, that's true. Um, if you are on my $10 Patreon tier, you get a PDF version of the book. So if you guys are interested in that, the truth is that's the cheapest way to get it. So that's what I would recommend. And you support the show. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, that's not that's not quite true. If you have one of those like Amazon, what is it? I can't remember what it's called. There's like an Amazon subscription service where you can like where, where you just pay the subscription and then you basically get the books for free and the, the author gets paid based on how much you read. That's actually the cheapest way. Um, but it's a whole like Amazon service. So anyway. I You were so morally good to correct yourself on that one. Well, because I realized it like, oh no, I did put it on that. Oh, it's I think it's called Kindle Selects. I think that's it what is. it's called. Yeah, that's, that's the one. <clears throat> so yeah, right. I, I think the interviews are great. Definitely a proponent of that that process. It helps in uh, so many levels in so many ways. Yeah, and I think interviews can be as small and shallow and as deep and long as you want them to be too. Mm -hmm. Like that's the other thing too. Um, sometimes like I this steers away from role playing a little bit, but when I talk about like writing for a novel, sometimes your first draft, the character that you have when you're writing your first draft is a shallow version of that character mm -hmm. so that you can have as much freedom to figure out what's going on as possible. Yep. Um, and then as you rewrite drafts, you might do more interviews with that character and get a little bit deeper and understand that character a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think a lot of people actually role play like this too. So, you know, especially yeah. in one-on-one -on -one role plays, that's definitely valid. Absolutely. And if that is how like, someone or RPs or, or how they handle their characters, then all power to you. Absolutely. <laughs> so, but yes, I think interviews are a vi vital part of the process of creating a character. Yep. So, I'm here for it. do you have anything else that you want to talk about on like the actual creation of the character or do you want to move on to like strengths and weaknesses? Um, let's move to strengths and weaknesses. Cause I feel like, I feel like we've, I've said enough about like that initial thought of the character. So that the next couple of things that I want to talk about 
um, strength and weaknesses is, is one of them. It is kind of like stuff that you need to really be thinking hard about after you have kind of made some decisions and you're going back and looking at that character again to make sure that, that they are built the way you want them to be built. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think one of the hard things for doing is, um, is assigning strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Because I think that that's part of like the depth and human and human of them. Mm -hmm. Because at least for me, I also want to have a background on why. Yeah. Why is this? Why is this character so afraid of abandonment? Why is this character so angry? Why is this character so needs to be the strongest person and has like a chip on their shoulder? Why did it? Why does that exist? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you have to be able, you don't have to be able to answer those questions. But sometimes when it comes to picking the strengths and weaknesses in order to get a good balance, you should know, or it will be easier for you to pick your strengths and weaknesses if you do know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think having a reason for them, this, see, this is one of these things where like a character is different than a, than a person, a real person, right? Sometimes people do things and they don't know why or they don't have a why. They just do them, you know? So for some of us, right, this is what figuring out that why this is what therapy is for. Like, we don't freaking know. We just we just live in our lives the best we can. <laughs> uh, but with a character, you are an omniscient presence in that character's life and they are not a full person so you can have very specific like this is why they are like this and um and you know if we talk about characters as like an empathy tool for kind of help trying to help people understand others and um and sympathize with people that are not like them and stuff like that those those whys become incredibly important and so um i totally agree get out of here uh, I totally agree when it comes to like those the strengths and weaknesses, finding the why. And I think in, in addition to that, it's important to think about how that character is balanced. Because as people, we might want to be the best version of ourselves. But if we create a character that's the best version of themselves, then there's nowhere for them to grow. And like, then it's like, why are you writing their story? Like their story is over. It's in their past. Like, what are you doing? So, Which, you know, <laughs> I, th I think we have to acknowledge that there is a type of our peer that wants to play the best version of a character and wants to play and doesn't want to play a character that is going through what we would consider their story. Yeah, that's true. Um, they, that, they want that conflict free experience. Which is not us. No. We have admitted it several times. Uh, in fact, we like to start at a high note and then hit rock bottom slowly, shortly after that high note. And then, and then go from, from there. there. Slow climb up. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, but I think that it is important to acknowledge that there are some people who, who don't want to do that, who are perfectly content on all of the growing is behind that character. And this is where they are now. Personally, I don't think it's it's not realistic enough for me. We, like you said, we will never be the ultimate perfect versions of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about characters is that characters won't either. Yeah, I think it's, I just think it's kind of boring. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just I, a little bit boring. <laughs> uh, Naomi asked a question earlier and oh. we can like bounce it off if we don't want to answer this right now. That's okay. Is there a character that screams they were the easiest for you guys to make, to so, create? Yeah, I would say that, um, that basically, well, a character type for sure. I would say that canon characters are always the easiest for me, and probably the the e easiest um, was like some of the characters that I used to play as a kid, right? Because like when I was little, I would play like Sailor Moon characters, right? And I would play um, Dragon Ball Z characters, and uh, and and those are relatively simple character wise, especially Sailor Moon. Like I would play um, Minako, Sailor Venus. And, uh, and those kids, Sailor Moon characters, they have like two traits, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, representing whatever planet it is. And, uh, and so that I would say, yeah, uh, honestly, like some of those, those early anime characters were the easiest. And it's because they had super clear traits and, and only like two or three of them. And then they would have like one super clear flaw. And, uh, and that's what made them easy. 
Yeah. I think, um, yeah, I think that there there's a nice like simplicity to to the stuff that we used to create when when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, that was easier, quote unquote. <laughs> I would say now, um, Jimmy is probably my easiest character. Yeah, uh, because he is he is so fully focused focused on the force of good and fighting what he believes is bad. And um, that's a really easy thing to tap into. Yeah. And I think a very yeah. clear cut goal that doesn't often get like confused. Yeah, he's um, like that Dungeons and Dragons paladin that's like, I'm out here for the forces of good and vanquishing evil. And I'm going to think Jimmy about it in a, a very simple like way. That. Yeah, he is and, a little bit. Um, and and if you I want to direct him in an interesting direction, it could be that the the good the goals that he has are not good in like the in the entirety of VRP. Like, oh no, honey, you're you're headed down a bad path. <laughs> but um but like for him that's not how he's played. Like that's a me as a as a character creator that I have to make that decision. It has nothing to do with the decisions for him. Yeah. Yeah, those character um, types yeah. are pretty easy too. Characters that they characters that feel like they have it figured out and they know what it is that um, that they want and it's very clear and uh, yeah. and they like they they think they know, right? I guess for for lack of a better word, characters that think they know, whatever that means yeah. for them. <laughs> those are very easy, yeah. For the same reasons that what I was talking about where like the types of characters I liked as a kid were easy because they were they had trait A, B, and C and weakness X, and and that was them, yeah. and that was all there was to them. <laughs> exactly, and yeah. that is that is a really nice character to play, and I think it is a good character that everyone has in their arsenal, yeah. Because it 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 doesn't require a lot of brain thought, yeah. Um, and like I said, you can still have really interesting thoughts and plots with that character, but <laughs> that's going to require more work on you than it is going to actually be shaking up. Who they are mm -hmm. yeah for sure um i like having those paladin types <laughs> and end up like killing a whole town as a consequence of their choices right that's so fun is um is having them make the absolutely wrong choice because they um their strict rules for their morals got in their way yeah. <laughs> and it's the best kind i like those kinds mm -hmm. yeah for sure i like them too <clears throat> they're fun um but as far as like character strengths going and we should probably get back onto this one mm -hmm. um i think it's important also when especially when working in a group dynamic is uh making sure that your strengths don't overlap with another character's strengths oh yeah that's a good point it's a really it's really easy in a group dynamic especially if your group likes playing certain types that you can accidentally copy other people's characters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and you have to, I, it is part of, it is my opinion that it, as part of an RP group, when you're creating characters, you have to be aware of the characters that have already been created. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And and not because I think copying is bad. I've talked about this and, and y'all know I don't think copying is bad. But I do think yeah. it is important that everybody in a role play feels special. And if what you're doing is going to take away someone's feeling special, then you should try to adjust and uh, and and not uh, do that. <laughs> yeah, and I th if you want to make it a joke, like there was one point in time, we'll say again, Jimmy, um he's just he's getting so much attention today. <laughs> well he you know he's so um, well developed so obviously that's your example that you keep going to right uh, yeah um he he wanted to be a mini a mini other ver another character especially mm -hmm. in his original rendition jimmy yeah uh, wanted to basically be like i want to be you when i grow up and so i was able to take a lot of like those same strengths and traits mm -hmm. and um use that because yeah. it was like oh he of course admires this person and wants to be this person so he's going to take those strengths and traits of this person um but i made it very clear that i was not trying to step on toes yeah and that we had completely different arcs but i think that that is something that you can play with but everyone needs to be on board with that you can't just be like oh this one character is really cool and they have this and they have this and they have this so i'm gonna make a character with this that and the other thing yeah 
Yeah, for sure. Hey, Jane, so happy you could join us. Yeah, I think I think that that's where communication has to come in, right? Like, you have to talk to the other person and say, like, hey, this is how my character is feeling about your characters. I'm not trying to copy you. Um, so, you know, I want to make sure that I'm not accidentally stealing plots from you because they there's going to be plots that come up that fit both of our characters, you know? Um, so I want to you want to have that open dialogue to make sure that you can talk about it. Oh, you've been here and just lurking? Jane! Y'all know when y'all come in, you have to say hi to me. It's the rules that I just made up right now. <laughs> I, I think that those have been the rules the whole time. I'm sorry that other people haven't been able to read your mind about it. Oh my god. I've been very aware that everyone has to come in and say hello. Um, well I then. also want to draw attention to something else that was said, and that was read the cast. And I agree yes. that if you're building a character, a new character, in an RP group, whether you are new to the group or not, your first step is to read the cast mm -hmm. to make sure that you do not have a character that's already like the character you are building. Yep. Your second step, in my opinion, would be to go to the recommended characters or the native characters and yeah. see if there's already a skeleton outline of the cat of the character you want to make. Yeah, if there's already somebody out there that's like, oh, you know, this is a wanted character or this is a wanted connection. Like, I think that's a great thing to do, like to go look and say like, oh, this particular person is looking for someone to come in and play their character's wife, right? Like, oh, if you have interest in yeah. what they're looking for, then there you go. And you've got a plot already in, in motion because that's other players already there and established in the role play and all of that, like... That is like, that's like cheat codes, right? That's like, that's like pro tips for character really? creation in a role play group. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I, I think one of the important things is strive to make your strengths different than mm -hmm. the strengths in other RPs. And um, yeah, I think when it comes to strengths, that's the most important thing is that you can have stuff in line, but make sure that you are unique and yeah. you're creating a unique character. Absolutely. So from from there, um, I have a couple comments on weaknesses. So I think yes. I think that we when we talk about strengths and weaknesses for characters, one of the things that gets talked about a lot is that people forget to give their character a weakness. And I do think that's true. But I think that's almost like one one on one level. And I've talked about that so much on spare room. So I'm going to skip right on past that because y'all are the smart kids and you already know all that. And I'm going to say instead, what I think is important is having a weakness that matches and, and like is, is, is opposed to or like parallels in some way what your character's strengths are. Like a char this character is confident, maybe they're like overconfident, right? To where like sometimes they run in guns a blazing when that was a really dumb thing to do. Um, so, so I think when it comes to weaknesses, like that's a really good way to create weaknesses that like, that feel natural to that character and, and still give them something where they're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Leone, it, I miss Leone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by Leone. No, you're um, good. It's easy to do. <laughs> Yeah, I think that um, it's a delicate balance, mm -hmm. right? Weaknesses. Giving enough that you're not setting up a character to fail while also giving them some. And then also recognizing that character that weaknesses doesn't make your character special. No. I mean, it does. But at the same time, like, there are some times where we, we all know a character that has, you know, like, this is wrong with them, this is wrong with them, this is wrong with them, this uh -huh. is wrong with them. But you should love them because the whole world is against them. Yeah. And it's like, no. <laughs> so, so I think I, I want to... I think I, I want to... Go, right. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. I love them if you write them correctly. I love them <laughs> if you give me a reason to love them. But if you're just trying to play the whole world is against me because they can't do anything right, then I'm not... There's nothing there for me to love. <laughs> yeah, I think like, okay, so I'll say this. If you have um, a character who has been traumatized in some way, that to me is more part of the history of the character. Trauma is not a weakness. And I feel like I know what, what kind of character you're talking about. And yeah. I think that the thought pattern that a lot of those people are going through when they're creating that character is that 
they're like, oh, this character has this traumatic past or this traumatic thing that happened to them or this thing that haunts them or whatever, and that's their weakness. Like, that's not a weakness. That no. is a character's background. So I think Help. <laughs> I think a, a, a weakness is how is like how they react to certain stimuli that they're getting currently, if that makes sense. And one can argue that having a traumatic background could actually be a strength category Maybe. and not and not a weakness category. It really depends, that, right? It, it does, but I think that most people I think that most time trauma, if you survive trauma, then that's a strength, right? Even if you're handling it badly, even if you have a completely terrible way of handling it, it is, at least for me, considered a strength. So sitting there and being like, oh, all well, these terrible things happened to you, it'd be like, great, she survived it, that's awesome. Goody in the strength category, or he <laughs> or she survived it, I should say. Yeah. Um, goody in the strength <laughs> category, but that's not what their weaknesses. You're absolutely right. That's not what is... That's not something that's going to make them, you know, crumble or like, that's not even the right word for it. I think of a weakness that it's like, oh, this is a blind spot. Yeah. Jimmy's yeah. weakness is that he will, he's reckless. Like, mm -hmm. we'll just keep using Jimmy today. He's <laughs> reckless. He will I should have put your Jimmy in. FC. <laughs> <laughs> um, he will go in and just. I mean, I could do Rab too. Rab is completely selfish. <laughs> oh, fault. only my dignity. And only my dignity. I, I don't think you. I don't think I know who you are. If you, if you have another name you'd like me to call you, please um tell me, and I'll do my damnedest to remember it. Um, they said trauma is more of an obstacle. Yes, absolutely. That's exactly yeah. what I'm trying to say. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You. I mean, it's something you have to give it over, but it's not something that like that that makes you weak. Yeah. Weakness is like Jimmy is reckless, that Ra Rav is completely selfish. So something he will look at the world in front of him and see that it is out to get him. Yep. Uh, he's complete and like trauma, you can argue that narcissism is stemmed in trauma and stuff like that. But his narcissism is 100 percent his weakness because he is paranoid and he does think the world is out to get him and that everyone hates him. Mm -hmm. um, it, but like he. Yeah. So that is a weakness for him. Mm -hmm. um, and you. Like, so yeah, it is how you react. It is that gut reaction to events rather than the things that I lived through. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I think that's where people are making that mistake. Um, and exactly when, they, when he, you, you hear people growing from trauma and growing mm -hmm. like for me has this positive sense. And when we're talking about weaknesses, they're not supposed to be positive. Yeah, there's something that you're still going through, right? There's something that you're still working on. Or like that you'll never be able to work on. Like Maybe. this weakness might just always exist. It might. Now, some people never get over their BS. <laughs> like that's a, yep. that's valid. <laughs> I mean, actually, let's be honest. Most of us never get over it. We it's true. have things that, without turning this into a psychology uh, podcast, we have things that happen to us as children or as young adults that will stay with us for the rest of our lives and we'll never notice it. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's just, it's just, it continues to be adaptive, right? Like if, if it never becomes, yeah. if it never becomes a big problem, we keep doing it, even if it's not Absolutely. the best thing in the world, you know? And it might just be part of our personality and it just yeah. might be part of what makes us us. And our friends might just go, oh, that's Landon. She just does that. Or that's Karen. She just does that. Or that's Jimmy. They, she, he just does that. Like, well, you know, I mean, I, you know, I've said before, like, dang it, stop eating the toadstool. Um, I mean, I've said before, <laughs> like, uh, I've never you seen know, that before. <laughs> I said before, like, um, you know, are they really your friend if you've if they've not pissed you off every once in a while, you know, so like, yeah, yeah. Uh, some things just aren't that big of a deal. And you keep doing them, even though they're not the best for you. Yes. So I, I do think that that like, it's important to give weaknesses. And it's also important to remember what are weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I have, uh, I have a video that I just made that actually goes over some more of this stuff. If you guys are interested, like if you want some more on that, um, about creating a very, a role playable character, right? Like how to create a, a character that's really suited for role play as opposed to another medium. So, um, so you can go check that out on my channel if you're interested in some more of that type of stuff. I also think very quickly, sorry about, oh, you're good. Is, um, that it's very important that we remember that we have like, your character's weaknesses are not meant to be a secret. Yeah. 
um, that part of the game is recognizing their weaknesses and letting that be accessible to other players. So mm -hmm. that can be possibly plotted to be exploited or something that someone can pick up on mm -hmm. because we pick up on each other's weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we need to like sit there and be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like a weakness is not a mystery for other characters to solve. Yeah. And, and as the writer, you should not, yeah, you should make that accessible. Yeah, I'm not absolutely. saying you have to like let everybody know, oh, a punch to the gut is how you destroy this person. <laughs> but you do have to sit there and be like, oh, he's obviously self-involved. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, you crush that sense of self and he'll be destroyed. Yep. Like there there should be something along those lines that are that is communicated over time. Yeah, I would say so. Absolutely. So. And I think... Um, and I think that uh, that when it comes to these when it comes to these weaknesses, what are you eating it? Um, when it comes to these weaknesses, like the most important thing to keep in mind is kind of going back to what we talked about at the beginning is what why are you writing this character? Like what are you doing? And um, and make sure that, that the strengths and weaknesses that you choose play into that. That um, that what you're still doing is ultimately supporting whatever your original goal was. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, you do not want to have weaknesses that are counterintuitive to your goal, unless no. you're planning a really long RP in which you're going to get over those weaknesses and then have them be reversed so that you can get to your goal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, and I don't know. And I know some people out there have like really long running RPs, but, um, but, uh, that's not the norm. So, I mean, you should be, you should be planning things that you can do yeah. in a relatively short amount of time. That's not going to take years and years and years, you know? Yeah, and don't be me. Just like take the take the like six month road and not the like three year road. <laughs> we never make it to three years, so we don't. But I still plot that long. Oh my god, <laughs> Landon's so passionate and about that she clipped it. <laughs> Landon's so passionate about that she clipped. She clipped the mic. She's so she's so oh, important god. to her. <laughs> it is it's extremely important. Oh, um, you're cracking me up. Always. Yep. We're actually moving through this subject really fast. So if the chat has questions, I haven't seen any. I think we've answered most of them. That. I think we've answered most of them that have come up. But yeah, um, any others? Um, I had an RP going for five years and it still didn't finish. Holy crap, I've never. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's me, though. Like, I think this, I think it's me. Like, I think I get bored. <laughs> Uh, and so that's not, that's not how I do things. Usually like two years is the max I can do any one thing before I'm like, I'm over this. <laughs> Only my dignity. I'm on the same pages as you. Weaknesses give a character some layers and depth and I love them. I agree. We weaknesses is what makes, I love a character's weakness. Like not even my own characters, but other people's characters' weaknesses so much more than I love their strengths. Yeah, for sure. And you always think about like who are the characters that are that are beloved. The characters that are that tend to be um, beloved in like a in like a book or a TV show or something are usually the broken, messed up ones, right? They're like the yeah. villains or they're like the outcasts or whatever. You know, like that's what people like. So when you make a perfect character, it's no wonder no one likes them. No one likes them in any medium, you know. Yeah, it always. I'm not gonna lie, it always makes me like question because I'm like, I understand that there are some people who want to play that out and like, and are striving for that. But like a part of me is like, are your favorite characters the perfect characters too? <laughs> like, does that happen? Because characters aren't perfect on TV or in books and stuff like that. And it, it always made me like, is that what your inspiration is? I'm so confused. I think it's probably not that. I think it's more of like, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us role play as an escape Right. And so it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, oh, life sucks. I'm going to go be perfect on the Internet. <laughs> I just want to be loved. Yeah, I mean, and I, I understand. You, if you write a flawed character, I'll love you. Yeah, probably. I mean, you're probably going to get more of it if you write the flawed character is the truth. I'm just also obsessed with like messed up characters. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. Yep. I mean, we did a whole episode on villains for a reason, because we feel like that's a type of character that, um, that we're really drawn to and uh, and that more people should be writing. Yes, please do. Continue yeah. to write villains. For sure. Or even better, continue to write heroes that aren't all good. Yeah. That is something, and I know I, I think we talked about this in the villains episode, but that is something that I have been so grateful for, the transition in media that has happened over the course of my lifetime. 
yeah. that heroes or protagonists have gone from this pillar of good to being able to be fucked up yep. and being able to be morally incorrect. Like, oh, the the day they gave Tony Stark PTSD in Marvel was the day I just wept with joy that I'm like, heroes can be messed up too, guys. I mean, it sounds cheesy, but it's true, right? There's a reason it's that so that um, that anti heroes and anti villains are popular and have and have been popular for a long time. Um, only my dignity says uh, my favorite characters are typically the ones that walk the fine line. Yeah, I think that that's that's so super common, right? Like that's so super common, and there's a reason for it. Gray characters, all the shades of gray. Yeah, just not fifty of them. Oh, uh... there's hundred and thirty. <laughs> sure. Know, James got it wrong. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um but yeah i think i think um when it comes to those when it comes to those strengths and weaknesses like it's it's trying to eliminate your weaknesses i think really just ends up biting you in the butt like it's just it just doesn't work out you know what i mean yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah Kassin, i i agree with you um, Marvel is actually successful because of the comics their characters were already messed up for a long time. Um, I agree. And that's why I've always said my favorite crossover would be any DC villain with any Marvel hero. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. DC does such a great job um, creating and then fostering villains. Where, uh, and some of their heroes are okay. But I feel like Marvel does such a good job on creating realistic heroes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. Yeah, Marina says <laughs> the, hero, the hero from Megamind. Yeah, hell yeah. That's a good movie. <clears throat> so, anyway, shall we move on to the next yes. segment? Yes, yes, let's move. Next segment. Um, oh, wait, Winnie has a question. Important. Wait, Winnie has a oh. question. Let's answer it before we go to the next segment. Have you ever actually ruined a character by resolving the weakness that was most fun for you to play? I'm trying to think if there's a time that I've done that. I can't think of one, but I have, I've seen that happen. Like I've watched players do that and then they have to kind of sit and just, and they, and they just play the character and doing the same thing over and over to death. And it's like, so boring. <laughs> I can't think of a time that I've done it. Can you think of a time that you've done it, Landon? No, because I'm perfect. Ah. Um, <laughs> No, hold on. Let me think on it. I'm sure I have. Yeah, I'm sure I have too, but I can't think of it. But I can. I definitely have watched people do that in game, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Where they like they resolve the tension too quickly, um, and then all of a sudden everything's boring. Yeah, I think um, I've definitely done that with. I can't. I've definitely done that with a relationship. Yeah, where with a ship. Like, the goal of the relationship was to get them in a relationship and then as soon as they were in a relationship we had no idea what to do with them <laughs> it was like oh this um, is boring now and so then when we played them again I, this was before before you uh karen okay um <laughs> <laughs> when we played them again we just never had them get back into a relationship it was always this like will they won't they and it became like this this want and need for this attention became my character's weakness oh. and and then like, but it was like, we weren't solving it because we didn't know what to do afterwards. It was really, really tough. Um, but yeah, there's this, I mean, for me, I feel that there's this like stagnation that if it hasn't been developed, if there hasn't been enough character development to go with the solving of the weakness, it is suddenly uneven. Yeah. Um, and it causes you to stagnate. If your character has hypothetically, you've grown your character enough that they will have already probably developed other weaknesses that you can then get rid of or step over on that weakness, that mm -hmm. there are other things to take its place or other goals in which they are not fulfilling at that point either. Yeah, for sure. Um, hey, Ty, so glad for you to join us. Um, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, we, we had our endings episode um, just last week, I think that was, right? And then, um, and, uh, and you know, if you have a character that's fulfilled what they're supposed to fulfill then that's their ending, right? Like that's their ending. And so I think it's it's important, you know, as role players, uh, when you have situations like that, like to know when to let go, to know when that maybe it's time for that character to become an NPC or for them to get killed off or for you to end that particular role play or whatever, you know, whatever it is that, that you need to do for your situation. Um, I think that's basically yeah. how you resolve that, resolve oh. that type of problem. 
is that it needs to end. Mm -hmm. It was ending time, and you had to take whatever ending steps you're going to take. Fiddles in with popcorn in a notebook. <laughs> yeah, Ty, um, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. You should, you guys should always bring snacks to the stream. Um, I think that's good, good streaming, um, is to come and bring snacks. <laughs> okay, so yeah, okay, so we answered that question. So now we can move to the next thing. Um, get us started, Make Landon. Best by the deity that they messed around with. Thank oh! you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, our next subject is goals and arcs, which means I get to talk about plotting more. So yes. we, we all know I love this section of this. Yeah. Um, I'll say it again. We've said it before. I'll say it again. Have a clear purpose in mind about why you are making this character. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that might look like a few months plotted out. For you, it might look like uh, a reason, a goal, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. sort of direction that you want to head your character into. Um you, I think that that's some of the biggest mistakes we make as our peers is that we build these characters that we love, we set them loose in this world, and then we have to do all the legwork there to figure out what their goals are. And that oftentimes fails because other people aren't playing what we need them to be playing because they're not doing the work for us. Yeah, and, we and no one's going to. to. Like have, we need to have the, the momentum beforehand that you're like, oh, I can drive this conversation the direction I want it to go that is best suited for my character because I know what direction I want to go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that's a big thing with, with, with role play. Like, nobody, nobody's going to do it for you, right? Like, nobody's going to yeah. do it for you. So the only way that you're going to have that, like, story progress, like, if that's what you want, like, that's obviously what we want because that's what we talk about all the time. But if you want that, your character has to have a goal from, from jump, right? Like, you have to have a goal from the very beginning or some, like, vague idea of a goal or something. Like, you don't have to decide, like, every little detail, right? Like, you don't have to decide every little detail, but you need to know, like, my character wants power. My character wants to have a child. My character wants to grow in their career. You know, like, whatever it is, um, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. But uh, but you have to have some kind of vague idea of your character's goal so that you know what it is you're going to go role play because if you don't have anything like that then you have to do the work during the threads and at least in our experience that is basically just making your life harder for no reason yeah and and it doesn't have to be like the whole goal of this person is to take over the town and then rule it fascist style like that doesn't have to be the goal that you set out to do if you want that goal to be something small like I want them to do this one thing or something like even then, at least that is a direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So Ty's asking tips for thinking up goals for characters. So, so my main tips for that is, is really to think about it in terms of like short-term and long-term goals. So I typically are try I'm trying to think of like in general in life, what is this character's goal beyond of course, surviving, like everybody's, everybody's goal is to not die. Right. <laughs> but well, maybe they have I another have characters who, whose goal it was to die. So. Well, true, <laughs> but in general. Right. So I think, yeah. I think like a long-term goal is, is things like, you know, um, you know, have a family, uh, have a successful business, uh, you know, grow emotionally as a person, stuff like that. But like small goals might be things like um, learn to cook uh, or they might be things that are like, um, you know, try to to grow your friend circle. You know, I, I think I think to think of thinking of goals in terms of how long or short they take is really helpful here because that will help you with not just making a goal that's kind of like so far off and so pie in the sky that you never even get to it, right? Because remember, as we said, role plays often end before you really get to play out everything you wanted to play out. So um, having a goal that's too large and too long term and then no other smaller goals, um, I think can kind of help with causing that. I think another good thing is to ask what your RP needs, especially if you're in a group dynamic. Yeah. Um, sit there and be like, okay, what's the, what direction is the, is the uh, RP heading in? The RP mm -hmm. is heading in a direction in which a Antifa-like mob family is going to take over. Then maybe you should make a goal that your character joins those forces. 
or yeah. that your character is going to be the part that takes them down or your character is going to be eventually betray the family that you're a part of. Mm -hmm. um, these are all valid goals and they don't have to be plotted out and you don't even have to know why, but that way in that direction, you know that when you're meeting with someone who is part of that Antifa family, um, that you you can make that and you know that in your head like oh eventually i want these guys to work on the same side so i know that this conversation should go pretty well yeah or this yeah. can be an in or we can have a possibility here mm -hmm. um, and landon's referencing atlantis a lot because that's the role play that yes, um that I, we just that we just finished so that's why she's that's the words that she's using that's why <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm talking i'm talking like yeah yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, most people most people know uh, know enough about Atlantis at this point. I think it's probably fine. But I just wanted to do it for anybody that's like this is their first episode that they're listening to. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm referring to I'm referring to inside jokes from Atlantis. I should be better about ye, that. Ye knew Antifa. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Accidental revolutionary. Oh, that was awesome. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. I think when it when it comes to like when it comes to those those goals. Uh, you know, looking at what everybody else needs is also important. Now, I don't think that you should make your character completely around what everyone else needs, but I do think it's worth asking and seeing if any of that like sparks your interest, right? Because if you can have your interest sparked in something that you know the role play needs, then all the better, right? Then everybody's happy. Um, but I don't, I think, you know, make sure that you're not picking something up just because it was asked of you, because I don't think that that's, that goes super well. No, you have to be you have to be invested and wanted it and want it too. Yeah. Um and it, and I think also from some some way it needs to be your idea. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying that you have to be the person who came up with it, mm -hmm. but you can't be told in a checklist formation of what has to happen. Yeah. You need to be able to have some own ownership in your character or else you're not your character, you're basically playing an NPC. Yep. And I think um, I think where some people get confused with this is like when you're playing like tabletop role play games, often your character's goals are kind of dropped in front of you by like a dungeon master or a game master, right? And that's just not usually how online narrative role plays work. You kind of have to do that work you're on your own because there isn't really somebody that is like responsible for, for driving the plot the way that a dungeon master or a game master does in those types of games. So that's something I think to be aware of is just to, re to remember that like, no one's gonna do the work for you. Typically, there's not a game master. The most that you're going to get is the mods and the admins like dropping things to help you get inspired but they're not going to do anything for you or tell you you have to do this that or the other right like that's not something that's going to happen whereas in like a tabletop role-playing game oftentimes that that is what happens you don't have to do that work because it gets dropped in front of you yes so good to remember it is very, very good to Sometimes remember. Sometimes the people who try to uphold the status quo become really important too. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's not always just about changing the world. Like often we think of protagonists as the characters that go around and elicit change. And those and those are good goals too. But I think that in a role play where you have lots of different characters and everyone is essentially playing their own version of a main character, um, it's valid to make a character that's goal is to keep everything exactly how it is, right? Not make any change changes to the world like I, I I have what I want and I don't want that to change and everyone coming for me you know I'm gonna be I'm gonna try to crush them like that's a valid goal absolutely I think it's a hundred percent a valid goal I think it's one of the most difficult goals however to play and I think that that needs to be acknowledged yeah that um, it relies that, on others is, it, it relies on others but at the same time like um the nature of how RP and storytelling works you know that your character is going to fail at that goal. Yeah, it is. Right, because that's the nature of storytelling. If if you are a status quo character, if you're if that goal is that everything needs to stay the same as when it started, I hate to break it to you, things aren't staying the same. <laughs> not in not in our games anyway. I mean, <laughs> and, and I don't think in any game because I yeah. think that if you look at narrative, at least narrative star storytelling, um, things change. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Like that is part of it, which is a totally great goal and something that is fine to have too, because then your goal all of a sudden scrambles to everything needs to be back to what it was. 
or I need to learn how to succeed in the world as it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, I think it is an important thing to know you choose to be the. Oh, you cut out there real quick. You choose to be setting up your character. To fail. Oh, you cut out there a little oh, bit. Oh, when Landon. you are, when you are, sorry. You're good. <laughs> when you are ultimately um, making your character, your character, your character, that character, you are ultimately setting up your character to fail. Mm-hmm. Which is not a bad thing, but it mm-hmm. is something that you need to keep in mind when you make that your ultimate goal. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, Thumper's saying um, she had struggled with that with Kano because basically because the RP unraveled in the main storyline, it was hard. Yeah. That's something that 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 that, uh, that that role play taught us. We are not very good after we finish the main story that we had planned to keep going. Like we need to just stop trying to do that and just end it. You know what I mean? So we tried in Magic Reborn to keep going. It didn't work. We talked more about that in the endings episode. But um, yeah, absolutely. I think that is something to keep in mind in regards to role play. The role play, it, because it's other people are going to be interacting with it and things like that, sometimes things are going to happen that do mean that you have to take your character in a different direction than what you had originally planned. And that's why I think that... It's important, like having a general goal is more important because then you have an idea of like, okay, well, this happened in the world and my character has to react like this because this is generally their goal and then their goal is messed up now. Um, So that's why I think having it in terms of that goal is a little bit easier and more useful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do we want to talk just a little bit about like some different character arcs in regards to this too like we've talked a lot about goals specifically but i i think uh thinking about this in terms of like characters position is in position a and then moves to position b by the end of the story is a useful way to think of this too yeah, absolutely i think that um i think that this involves a little bit more plotting yeah uh not always having every single step plotted out but if you know you want to actively move if you want a character to become, you know, that to be a loyalist to the person who's in power and then in the end betray them mm-hmm. or vice versa, um, then you need to you need to have that idea OK with that. That's the goal that you're coming with. And and I think that involves a lot, a lot more plotting than yeah. letting things happen. Yeah, which is for not sure. a bad thing. Yeah, if, if, if you have, like, an arc that you want them to go through where it's, like, I need them, like, this isn't the character's goal, but, like, I need them narratively to learn this lesson or to go through this change, then um, then that does take plotting. So, like, I'll give a, an example of that. Um, Abby's original incarnation, right? I had her moving from somebody who was kind of justified some of the bad things that uh that her and her people did by like thinking that they were that they were good and she was like a like kind of um a silent agreeer to to some bad things that were going on right and then by the end she was actively part of doing that harm and um and becoming even more hardcore in that right so like that was like an arc that i took her through like it wasn't her goal like her goal was not to become more badass right it's just a consequence (laughs) of taking her from somebody that was like you know oh these these people deserve this harm to actually doing the harm that she spoke about before right so if you're going to do like an arc like that, then because role play is collaborative, you need other people to bounce that off of. So in that situation, we um, we resolved that by basically uh, through her, her brother who was in PC most of the time, which made it really easy. <laughs> and then also through yes. her, her through her boyfriend um, slash husband because they eventually got married. Um, you know, those two characters kind of encouraging her along this path. Every time she did something a little bit worse or condoned something a little bit worse, they were like, yeah, you're going, you're doing the right thing. And, uh, and so that was that positive reinforcement that she got. No one told her that that was a silly thing to do. And that's, we were able to achieve that because I communicated saying, this is the path I want her to go on. Like I want her to develop, to develop in this way and be pushed in this way. And, uh, so then, then if people did discourage her from that path, um, they understood why my replies were like her fighting about it and not just agreeing with them, even though they were obviously right, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so it takes more communication when you're when you're doing uh, arcs. But those are good ways to make sure that your character always has something to do too. Yeah, I think that the way I look at it is that if you are doing a goal, the responsibility, quote unquote, uh, rests on your character's shoulders. 
Yeah. You are, your character is going to be reactionary for that goal. If you're doing an arc, the responsibility relies on you as the writer's shoulders. Yeah. Because you have a goal in mind that your character does not know is happening that you have to figure out how to get to point A to point B. Yeah. Which is really funny to talk about because you character, you are writing as your character, you're responsible for your character, and you are obviously you as the writer. <laughs> but I think that that responsibility exists in a way, not saying that like your character is a separate entity of you, but like it's reactionary versus planning. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more about it's it really is more it really is more about your thoughts versus the thoughts that your character is having and and obviously like your character is not real they don't have thoughts but if you are if you're a writer like if you're writing like you know what we mean <laughs> yes. you know what we mean like just because the if character you're listening is not to this podcast you know what we mean <laughs> yeah like just because the character is not real and they're and they don't have thoughts uh, we all hear the character's voice in our heads, right? Like we all go through that. So, so y'all know what we mean when we say that. We don't mean that the character is actually speaking. Hopefully, that is obvious. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is that it is the responsibility on you getting your character there or letting your character run with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and absolutely. that I think is the biggest difference between goal and arc. Yeah, yeah. And then um, also, also when it comes to arc, like the ending has to be in some kind of opposition to or parallel to the beginning and that's not necessarily true of goals when it comes to arc there has to be like state a and then state b is somehow related to state a right so it's a little yeah. bit different than a goal where it's just like this is something i eventually want to do it doesn't necessarily relate to my present state um it's just like something out there that that is eventual for me hopefully exactly yes yeah yeah Ooh. Um, yeah, I think, um, the other thing is, is that if you're going to do an arc for a character, you need to be excited about that arc. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of the same thing with the goal, um, because it's a lot of work for you. Yeah. <laughs> you getting that arc there is going to be a lot of work. Yeah. Um, yes, Ty, um, I, I do have an example of, like, state A, state B. So, like, state A would be, like, a character that is, um... That's, uh, that's very stubborn, that doesn't open up, they don't have a lot of friends, and maybe the character doesn't necessarily want to open up more, but as the author, you know that's the arc that you want to take them on. So state B will be a character that is more emotionally vulnerable, that makes those um, connections easier, that maybe has better communication skills, and that would be an arc right? Because they're going to have to go through like a slow and gradual change for that to happen. They're probably going to regress at some points. And it's not really something that the character is trying to do. I mean, you could turn it into that, like the character could recognize this is something I want to change about myself, but not necessarily, right? A character arc can be totally impo opposed, imposed upon the character from external forces. It's not necessarily their choice to become a more open person, but it's something that you, the author, wants, which means you need to have the environment and other characters act on that character to make it happen. So I hope I hope that clarifies and, and makes sense for what we're talking about with the the kind I mean, of like it, beginning and ending of an arc. It kind of like works for us too. Like if we want to if we want to talk about if we want to relate it to our real lives. Mm -hmm. A goal of mine is that I want to publish a novel. Yeah. My character arc is all the shit I have to go through in order to publish a novel. Yeah. <laughs> so like you can have a goal of wanting to publish a novel, but um but uh if you if you don't if you don't kind of have certain experiences in your life that becomes very yeah. difficult, right? If you <clears throat> need to do this thing or meet this person or or get a, you know, get on board or need to be in a different point in time, it's it's how you get through that to get there. Yes. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, Cass has a, a good comment that's a little bit higher up here that I missed when yeah. you said it. Sorry. Um, there's that process some writers go through of working in what the character wants versus what the character needs. So yeah, if you look up this this type of writing advice, you will see a lot of that, like thinking about what the character wants versus what like the character needs or the story needs. And, uh, and that's exactly the type of thing that you're talking about. So when you see kind of, when you see that language in a lot of writing advice, that's the same type of thing that we're talking about here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and also like, I think that that's a base of writing though. Like, and it doesn't even need to necessarily go through character want or arc and stuff like that mm -hmm. of your, 
what you think your character needs is going to be different than what their care what your character wants because Probably. if you just gave your characters what they wanted and it was what they needed then then that they would just not need anything well then there's no conflict right then there's there's there no conflict they mm -hmm. would get everything they wanted yeah <laughs> um that's a little bit boring <clears throat> i didn't want to say it in so many words but yes yeah. it is a little bit boring oh. <laughs> um okay Oh, Y'all are doing the, the hydrate and the posture checks on me. Okay, sure. There we go. I was slouching quite a bit. I was for real slouching, though. Like, I was like, oh, shit. I really am. <laughs> I'm over here painting my nails, so. Oh, I love it. What color are you doing? Um, Purple with a matte top coat. Oh, beautiful. I like it. Uh, <laughs> it's self-care spell reagent time. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do we still have a do we still have an answer questions about the uh No, I deleted it. Ah oh, man, you shouldn't have deleted it. I mean, they can still ask questions. They can still ask questions about like the character creation process for the role play cuz we've worked a lot more on it um since Thursday. Yeah. So we do have oh, some yeah. more. Oh yeah, we should let the we should let the non mods know that the mods now know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The my my mod team that I tend to invite, we did the whole thing where I invited them and I let them know, "Hey, you guys don't have to be mods, but you need to let me know if you want to be and um, and if you can help, right? And so all, all of the mod team wants to mod this RP. So if that, that should tell you something, how excited they are about it. <laughs> Every single one, even you guys that told me you were busy and might not want to and might not want to come Listen. back and stuff like that. Um... <laughs> I don't think... We are being very productive, <laughs> not gonna lie. Yeah, we really are. So everybody's very, very inspired. Um, so what new fields in the app are the, is the app going to have? So we're still working a little bit on exactly what the app is going to look like. There's some things that um, that Landon and Naomi, um, and I think actually- Can I say one word for it? Sorry? Can I say one word for it? Uh, it's not going to give anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Packages. Packages. That's all. That's all you get. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So there. So some. I think actually everybody. So so to let you guys know, my mod team is typically um, is Naomi, Landon, Kendra, and Shadow. Now all of them don't mod every single role play. So like that doesn't. Don't think that's always the mod team because stuff happens and sometimes they they go away and come back and stuff like that. But so that's the people that have seen it. Um, and uh, and they pointed out some things that might need to go in the app that I had not originally considered. But um, but I told you guys about that uh, that that motif mechanic. So that's going to be in the in the app. Motif is going to be in the app. Job, of course, is going to be in the app. I always put that that sort of thing. Job or a role in the app. And then the other thing that I know is going to be in the app is spell. So motif Ooh, and spell, a lot of and those are related. Well, only the only the things that I know for sure is what's going to happen, right? That's and I'm not saying what those things, I'm not explaining it. Like they don't know what a motif is. I mean, they know what the word means, but they don't know what it is in the context of the role play. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's, um, that's what I can say for right now for the app. That's not, that's not all of it. There's definitely going to be more fields on there based on what you guys have pointed out to me already. Um, but that's what I know right, right this moment. Yeah. Um, I, we have to make a timeline, so I don't have that for you guys yet, but we have to make a timeline on like when veterans are getting in and then when everybody's going to be able to come in and then when we're actually going to launch, um, hopefully we'll have that for you relatively soon. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, character creation in that role play is going to be really, really fun. Is going to be fantastic. Yeah. And I think that we have a lot more freedom um to both hang ourselves and to set ourselves up for success i gave you a lot that. of rope i gave you a lot of rope didn't i <laughs> uh which i love and i think it's going to be great um i think that there are going to be a very interesting bunch of characters which we always knew yeah we always have that um I think that this allows for a different variety of characters than we had in atlantis mm -hmm. Um, which I think is nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> Thumper thuds at door. What's, oh, so, Ludo. Okay. Got we're it. not, so Thumper, <laughs> I have to tell you, um, Ludo is not coming to this role play in, in light of, um, in light of, uh, certain things that you are very well aware of, uh, Shadow has requested that we do Sam Dean this time. So we are going to do that, uh, instead of, uh, Ludo Alistair. So get ready for some Sam Dean. Um, J squared still though. So that's the important part really. Well, you know, we'll figure it. We don't know. We haven't decided. 
<laughs> we haven't decided, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be Sam Dean. It's not gonna be um, Ludo Alistair. Ludo was a joke on packages. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh, it's fine. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the character creation process for this one. Yeah. Rooting for Viviana. Yes, I want to bring Viviana. Um, once you get a chance to see the role play, Marina, we will talk all about that because I absolutely want Vivian in the role play. And um, if you want to bring Anna too, we can totally do Viviana. I think I might make a new character. Oh, really? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I know my first character. I'm yeah. not spoiling it. <laughs> I mean, I am. We've already said it. But well, really, I'll let clever people. Hagen... Clever people figured it out already. <laughs> <laughs> Verbs. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm going to, I, I don't know for my second character, I'm limiting myself to two because life, but yes. Yeah. So anyway, um, character creation is going to be really, really fun in this, this RP. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Landon is just leading by example. <laughs> Always pass. <laughs> Always. Yes, absolutely. Also, thank you for using my name properly. <laughs> <laughs> so um castle i think what you don't what you don't know is that she purposefully misspells her name so she can be like land in maine right for for the pun <laughs> which i think is but so I funny love it. yeah it's awesome keep calling it keep calling me that because it's my favorite thing ever it's better branding right because then it matches yeah. like your instagram and stuff yes <laughs> <laughs> yay so yeah characters are gonna be great in this next rp in the next rp um, I think oh, I'm so ex I'm so excited to see when people bring in new character or their same characters, what this version of those characters are going to bring out. Because I think there's especially some um, people in our RPs that are, have been developing their characters very, very well over the last three years, three, four years. Um, that I'm like so excited to see this new, new version of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Me too. Okay. Um, it's getting to be about that time. And I think we've said everything that we wanted to say about character creation yeah. basics. We wanted to keep this, we wanted to keep this episode very like chill and just kind of like the 101 character creation stuff. Um, there's of course always so much more to say on character creation. And we even have like, like a, a, another episode about this, two other episodes that I can think of. We have the villains episode. We have the creating characters that aren't like you episode. Um, so there's lots of other niche topics with this. So I'm sure we'll revisit a lot of this stuff, but uh, we realized we didn't have like a, a yes. 101 episode. So that was, that was the purpose of this one. I, but I think we, we got all through all the 101 stuff. Is there anything else? Is there any other questions that you guys have, um, have before we move to the next I thing? Go ahead, Landon. What were you going to say? I'm just going to say, I'm just going to reiterate, uh, have a reason why. Yeah. Have a reason why you're making this character. Uh, and if that reason why is that you want to just have fun and create chaos, that's a valid reason, but uh, have a purpose. Yeah. I think if you do that, all the other stuff falls in place, right? Absolutely. And yeah. choose your name last. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or don't. Do whatever the fuck you want, right? Like, don't listen to us. We're I mean, just losers on the internet. I'm to tell you what to do. Undermine the whole episode. Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, while they're trying to figure out if they want to ask questions, should I should I put the link for the good news? Yes, in the I'll, chat? I'll go ahead and save the game, and um, we'll get that opened up. <clears throat> okay. Alrighty, let's switch to desktop. Oh, I did not mean to click Discord. It's already open over there. I meant to click my Chrome. Okay. Thanks for the entertainment while I'm while I clean. That's exactly what we're here for, um, Jane. You're welcome, Jane. And you know, Ty, there's always the vods for the parts that you missed, so don't worry. Okay, here we go. Good news article. Zoom is lifting its 40 minute time limit for Thanksgiving Day, so families can hang out together. Oh, so, so if you have a free I, Zoom. Here's a little thing. I understand that it's capitalism. I understand that they're just trying to get good nature and money and things like that. But this made me really happy. So on Thanksgiving Day, for those of you guys who aren't in America, Thanksgiving Day is next Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, and because we're in a global pandemic, everyone's like, don't travel, which I yeah. totally understand. But there's a lot of people who are 
very much not with family, not with anybody who is going to have a really tough time. And if you are not paying for Zoom, then Zoom only has a 40 minute limit for meetings. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can only be in a meeting for 40 minutes. And I don't know if it's a day or if it's per meeting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I use my work account, which they pay for. So yeah. <laughs> but, so typically, for the most part, that's been fine because most people uh, like have a check in for forty minutes and it's good. But this, they're lifting it the entire night or the entire day of Thursday, all the way uh, till that morning, uh, the next morning, that you can have Zoom on as long as you would like and be able to spend Thanksgiving virtually with your family anywhere you want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so nice. Um, so for those of you guys that are going to see family for Thanksgiving, um, I'm just going to get on my soapbox just a little bit here. Uh, please, you don't need to see like 50 family members, right? Like it's okay to just go see, you know, just grandma by herself. Like you don't, these big gatherings, I, people are going to have them, I know, but please don't y'all like, please don't. Um, you don't need to see every single family member on Thanksgiving, even though that's what you normally do. Like, it is not worth it right now. And if you are going to hang out with family, um, please make it a small group and please like wear your masks and social distance yeah. and like wash your hands, <laughs> you know, yeah. like just do all the things um, because we we want when we finally do have a vaccine for it to be successful and for as many people to be able to get that as possible. And the only way we're going to reach that is if we do the things now to try to help less people get sick. Yeah. So please, like, please just be, please be smart. Like, I know some of you are going to get peer pressure from your family and you're not really going to have, like, as much of a choice as you would like to have, but, like, just be smart about it, y'all, you know? Yeah, and if you are traveling, then get tested before, get tested after. Yes. Uh, I know weights are a bitch, but most pe- most places right now are doing some version of a rapid test. Most insurance companies are covering that test. Um, Do what you can to protect yourself and other people. Mm -hmm. Um, I know what it feels like to like sit there and be like, I am far away from my family and I want to see my family. I 100% understand it. I get it. And just be smart and be safe and like, don't see 50 people. (laughs) Yeah. You know, like if your family's planning one of those big get togethers, um, maybe, Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, my dog is sick. I can't leave her alone. You know I mean? Like it, it it is what it is, but like, try to not do that, please. (laughs) And, and just know that like, there will be other people who are going to the gathering that will be thankful that you did that so that they can also feel like they did that mm-hmm. so be like a trailblazer in your family because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm sure you're you are there's no way you're the only one thinking it right like there's no way you're the only one thinking it um my clinic does a rapid test and the average wait is a is a day in six hours that's pretty fast like you basically know the next day then that's awesome yeah <laughs> i took one last night um in preparation for next week because i've not been hanging out with friends and stuff like that mm-hmm. uh within like a six feet distance and thanksgiving i am going to go hang out with my best friend so i took a test and i literally woke up at 5 30 this morning with results and i took it at five o'clock last night so like they can get stuff back to you really quickly yeah that that was my experience too next day so you know because um, my parents are coming they're coming in for Thanksgiving, oh, which is part of why we're not um, streaming at all next week, because I'm going to be hanging out with them. <laughs> As a high risk person, I encourage everyone to be safe. Yes, please be safe. Wash your hands. Take every precaution you can reasonably take. That's really all I'm, um, all I'm asking. And take advantage of Zoom lifting their 40 minute timers. Because yeah. yes, they're a evil company, but guess what? They're doing a thing that will potentially help save people and make people not feel lonely. Yeah. Like, I mean, of course they're doing it because they hope that after you experience that, you'll, you'll pay them the money, but you know what? You don't have to pay them the money. Take advantage of the, the, of it on Thanksgiving day. You don't have to pay the money afterwards. Right. <clears throat> As someone works for the NHS social distance, please. Like, yeah, please, please social distance. Um, so I want to do one other thing. Um, in addition to the article for the good news, I would just like us oh. all to share since we're not going to stream actually on Thanksgiving, of course, I'd like us all to share one thing that we are thankful for. So you guys in the chat, take a second to think about what you're thankful for. And oh, um, and while you're thinking about it, why, what, what? That's so cute. Oh, That's cute. <laughs> no, it's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, do you do you have something that you're thankful for, Lander? Do you want a second to think and I can go first? No, I got it. 
Okay. Um, um, go ahead then. Okay. So I messaged Karen yesterday and I said, uh, I asked, I was like, wait, is my math correct? Is 21 half of 52? And uh, if so, this is our 21st episode, which means we've been doing this for half a year. And I am incredibly thankful for it, for being able to be closer to you and be able to actually speak to you on a weekly basis instead of just texting all the time. Yes. And building part of this community and being able to interact with everybody who plays in our chat and everything like that. So I'm sorry if I stole what you were going to say. But <laughs> no, I, I kind of figured... I kind of figured you would say something like that, right? <clears throat> oh, good. But I'm incredibly <laughs> thankful that we have been allowed to get to, we've been allowed to, that we have made it to six months, that we are not anywhere near ready to stop, and that we're going to be able to continue this. You know what? Well. Stop it with your actual math thumper. We still, um, 26 is half 52, whatever. We still have been doing this for six months, though, because we started the stream back in <laughs> July. So it is still six months because there's been weeks that we've skipped, right? So that's why it's not exactly half as far as the number of episodes. Plus, there's two episodes that don't have numbers, right? Um, because there was two of them before we started actually making outlines and stuff like that. So, um, so yes, it is. So, we are still halfway, even though the numbers don't exactly work out. Because uh, we started also, this back in I July hate that I'm a math teacher and I th said that 21 was half of 52. Ah, so. whatever, you were close. <laughs> um and I didn't I didn't correct you when we chatted because I didn't know. I was just like sure that sounds right, whatever. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm going to read some of y'all's comments. Um Mochi says I'm thankful for my recovery and good health, also thankful for my family's health. Oh, that's a really good one to be thankful for. I'm so good glad. One. I'm going to let me switch it to the webcam actually only instead of the article. There we go. Um, so that everybody can read all the white text. And Lunar says, I'm thankful for this stream and the YouTube videos. It makes me feel less alone and I'm very thankful I found y'all. Oh, Lunar, I'm so glad you found us too. Um, it's been really awesome getting to know you and seeing somebody else that makes content that is interested in doing roleplay help. Um, Cass says, I'm thankful for a recent friend I made in, on a roleplay site who's been more supportive with me and my depression. On top of that, we've been doing one of my favorite RPs I've had. Oh, that's such a good feeling. Um, and I'm very grateful for your work on your YouTube on these streams. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm not thankful for how ugly default Twitch emojis are, though. <laughs> Me either. Um, someday, someday I'll get some some better um, emojis. But the, they're, they're subscribers. The way Twitch works, it's like you get them for subscribers. I need to actually get somebody to build, to make me some, but haven't got around to it. Takes time and money, right? Um, okay, so while the rest of you are kind of like probably typing some more, I will share mine. So I am very thankful for all of you guys, all of you guys that come here and watch these streams, that chat with us in these streams, even everybody that's watching the VOD afterwards on YouTube, um, everybody that's leaving comments, everybody that has subscribed to YouTube, everybody that has subscribed or followed the Twitch. Like, I did not envision still doing this stuff at this point, like really, truly, because I've, I've mentioned this before, but I don't know that I've ever said it on an interstage window episode, but I started on YouTube originally because I got laid off and I just had nothing to freaking do. So I was like, well, I, can, I know how to make videos. I'll make YouTube videos. And so I started doing that thinking like, ah, oh, well, I'll probably get bored of this, right? Like this will probably be a thing that I do for like a year and then I'm bored. Um, you know, and I'll go back, I'll be, go back to working and it'll be, you know, by the time I get a job, like it'll be whatever. Um, but you know, years later, uh, two years later, I am still doing YouTube and have started on Twitch. So thank you all of you guys. Uh, probably it, it, it's in no small part because you guys are watching and finding such value in this content. So thank you. Uh, all right, let's read a few more. Ah, let's read a few more. Winnie says, I'm thankful for my job being steady throughout the pandemic and letting me have not have financial stress on top of everything else. Yes, me too. Oh my God. I'm so blessed that I can work from home. Um, Marina says, I'm thankful for all the extremely considerate friends I've made here. You're invaluable for my journey to become the best version of myself. Oh, well, you know, I mean, I kind of try to, I try to treat everybody, at least for me, and I think this is how most of um, my community feels. I try to treat everybody as well as I would like to be treated, right? Like I'm going to, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to do bad things and, you know, not be my best, the best version of myself sometimes. And I hope that y'all will show me grace. So I try to show all of you grace as well. Um, Thumper says, I'm thankful for a job that kept my mom and me going while she was laid off. And I may be getting a promotion. What? Oh, Thumper, if you get that promotion, you'll have to tell us about it. Congra uh, early congratulations in hopes that, um, that that does for sure happen. 
Uh, okay, and Naomi says, I'm thankful my family are all in good health despite the pandemic and the amazing friends I have in our role play group. You're with me through all the good times and bad. Yeah, um, I'm very, I'm very thankful that uh, that all of us are here and um, and that we're in good health. I know a couple of you guys actually did end up um, getting COVID. I'm not gonna say who because you know y'all shared that with me and that's not necessarily public information. But everybody that I know that has had it. Um, has been able to get through it and uh, they're in good health now and they're doing good now. So that is something that I am very, very grateful for. Um, I think that's I think that's most everybody that's probably going to type one. Um, OK, so with that, anything else that you'd like to say, Landon, before we switch over to um, telling people where to find us and all that good stuff? Yes, a reminder that on <laughs> December 12th, I expect all of you to take the day off of work and come play Among Us with us. Yes, if you are working on Saturday, Put in PTO on Saturday the 12th. Um, we are going to be playing Among Us. We're going to do it just like we did the Halloween stream with the um, scary Halloween, with the roleplay horror stories, right? For for the Halloween episode. So this is going to yep. be like our Christmas episode. So the the ticket for admission is a holiday tradition. So we're going to hopefully inspire you guys from some um, fun holiday role plays. So think of a holiday tradition that you would like to share on stream. And um, you can play Among Us with us and you can come in the voice chat and share that holiday tradition. And uh, and once again, I will hopefully not get imposter, but if I do probably fail miserably at it, because as we learned, I can't, I can't, I can't lie. I can't do it. <laughs> it's my favorite thing about you. Oh my Aaron. God. Uh, I, I knew I wouldn't be, I knew I wouldn't be good at it, but I was, I even surprised myself at just how horrible I was. So, so, you know, have, we can have fun with that. Um, oh, I love, oh. Taylor's birthday is on the 13th. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, Taylor Swift's birthday is like right is the day right after. That's interesting. Yeah, if yeah. you guys can come, please do. We would love to have as many of you as we possibly can. Um, I can get Kai Guy to play too. Yeah, Kai's really good. Have him um, I'm very have excited. Kai have Kai come play. I'm very excited at the possibility of of killing all of you. Um, <laughs> Start, Start time is noon. Me. Noon yep, Eastern. Be during our, um, our Twitch, we're gonna we're gonna stream it. If you would like to join us in the voice chat, please let us know. Yep. Um, we're gonna we're gonna aim for ten. If there's more in the waiting room, then we'll do it in shifts. Yep. But uh, please come play with us. It'll be a lot of fun. Noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Naomi, I'm ex I'm I'm expecting your husband to take off work for this. Just <laughs> yeah, have him take off work so that you can play with us. And um, and it's Among Us, so um, if you guys don't have the game, the way you do that is just download it for free on your phone. Very easy yeah, and or, very free. Yep. Yeah, it's also if you have stream uh, or Steam, it's on it's on PCs too. Yeah, it is, but you have to pay for it then. So you get it, you can get it for free Ugh. on your phone. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Okay, so with all, all right. that said, Landon, tell everybody where they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Land in Maine. Um, and yes, Cass, it is. Um, and that's where you can find me sometimes on Twitter. This week has been a week of just roasting Karen on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> Her stand account has transformed into a Karen roast account. <laughs> <laughs> gotta stop tagging me in things and then deleting them you know what I'll stop roasting you <laughs> you know what i pressed tweet and this is what happened i pressed tweet instead of schedule and landon was tagged in the tweet and so of course she saw it and instantly replied but i had already deleted it by the time i even saw her reply so it, now it just looks really silly <laughs> <laughs> it does yes um and more importantly you can buy my friend will's book on amazon uh it's called rough edges and straight lines he's a great poet guys so yeah. please do that mm -hmm. if you like poetry please go check him out you can um, also buy my book on amazon but that's another story yeah what's it <laughs> tell them the title tell them the title of your poetry book. Uh, around the world and back again by landon bowers mm -hmm. yep so, it's really good um, it's really it's good guys good. okay um, so where you can find me, of course, you can find me on Saturdays here at noon. We do interstage window on, on Saturdays at noon for about two hours. I also have a stream on Thursday evenings called Artistic License that is starts at around 630, where this stream is like, you know, me having conversations usually with Landon and other friends about various role play topics, artistic licenses, my stream where I do whatever I want. So that's a pure variety stream. You can find all kinds of things 
on that one. And, um, and if you liked what you heard today or saw today, make sure down below in the about of the Twitch or like, I think it's like right below the screen, you click that little heart to follow me so that you can get notified when I go live. I also have, of course, my YouTube show Spare Room that goes up every Wednesday at 2 p.m. And those are my scripted videos, right? So no rambling there, just very scripted, discreet role play topics. Um, and that's all in the about. So you can find the links to that in the about. The other place where I actually post stuff is Twitter. My Twitter is at It's Karen Terry. And it's mostly advertisement, but sometimes there's hot takes. So if that interests you, go follow my Twitter. And then, of course, if you want to ever be a part of Interstage Window, because we often have guests, the two things that you need to do is come to the Twitch live, like all of you are right now. And if you're listening to the YouTube VOD, try to make it to the live show. And also make sure you are in my Discord, which, again, down in, it's down in the about. Um, so that's all the places you can find me. If you'd like to support me, I have a Patreon. You can subscribe to the Twitch. Um, I also have tips down there, uh, all of that stuff, like all the usual stuff, right, for supporting streamers and YouTubers is there. And uh, and yeah, that's it. That's all. That's all I have for you guys. Um, thank you so much. And uh, make sure you guys all have a, a lovely Thanksgiving for those of, uh, those of you that celebrate that. I know I will be eating a whole lot of, uh, of turkey and sweet potato casserole, and I'm very <laughs> excited. <laughs> Green bean casserole for the win. Ooh. Something caught high. Yes. All um, right. Well, don't forget to be awesome. Yeah, and uh, make it a great day. All right. Bye, guys. I will see Bye. you. Not this. Not next week. We're taking a break. We'll see you the next the week. Yes. Okay.